Good morning from the studios of Max Impact. Should I say dog infested studios? This is Tim Rosanelli. I'm here with my um, producer extraordinaire, Justin Alviri. Hey, you. <laughs> All right. So, Justin, what's going on this week? Not much. Getting pretty excited. Yeah, it's getting close. Every single time she calls me, I was like, oh, the baby's coming. <laughs> yeah. She called me this morning. She leaves for work like an hour before I do. She left for work and she called me. I was like, oh, baby's coming. <laughs> She's like, I need a shirt. This one's not fitting me too well anymore. <laughs> I was like, you gotta <laughs> stop scaring me like that woman. Yeah, yeah. She's gotta start uh. texting you in advance, like, like, hey, I'm gonna call you. <laughs> but yeah, it's she not said I was gonna start thinking. texting in advance. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I'll just, I'll, I'll deal with it. But I was like, every single time she calls me now, yeah, because it's any day now. It's like, oh, baby's coming. Yeah, no, I just need a shirt. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was talking to Esther. I, don't, I don't know if I told you and. Um, I'm like, so where is she at? Like, and she's like, well, they told her that she could have the baby anywhere from a day, maybe a week or a full month. And I'm like, man, this baby just won't let us plan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, the due date's the 28th and it's the 14th today. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting there. But, but. It, it's just like a surprise. It's like weird because I, I mean, we're pretty much used to planning our whole lives a lot. Yeah. And this baby's just not cooperating, you know, because there's no planning. It's the like... due date is in two weeks. <laughs> but he, she was uh, – uh, last week she was – the doctor's like, yeah, she can come any day. Yeah. Or he can come any day. I was, I was trying to think about, like, when would be the best time? Like, would it – would I prefer you leaving the dojo for during the week, like all of a sudden, or would it be the weekend? I want it to happen in the middle of the night so she's already home. Oh, okay. Because, so, like, once she starts getting contractions and her water breaks and stuff, um, we, we're going to try to stay at home as much as possible because, you know, they just say you're going to have to try to stay at home as long as possible. And then when the, uh, when the um, contractions start getting closer together – then come in yeah. yeah then come in um so that, that's probably they'll send you home sometimes yeah. if, if you're like oh he's not coming yet so and there's studies that say um women who stay at home as long as possible actually have better pregnancies less uh cesarean emergency cesareans less uh -huh. forceps less you know suction the maybe they want you to move around they want you to keep moving around for a while i think it's that and you're a little more relaxed at home yeah in yeah. the hospital you're like okay let's like go but it's kind of just like the first like stage of contractions are all about the uterus yeah. opening, and yeah. so you don't need to be pushing or being worried. You kind of just need to relax and just let it happen. Do you have any preference weekday or weekend? Um, not. I mean, during the week, I got work to do. Yeah, but it's kind of. I was like, Elijah, hurry up! Dad wants a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's not going to be a vacation because yeah. we'll be taking care of a baby you think waking it's up every be a two hours. <laughs> but I won't have to go to work. It's not, not that good. I hate work that much, but it's like, hurry up, I want a vacation. The real reason I want him to hurry up is because I want him to hurry up and wake me up every two hours so he can hurry up and only wake me every four hours so he can hurry up and sleep through the night. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, get it all over <laughs> Yeah, with. I just want it over with now. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, you're going to hate it because he's, he's going to wake up all the time. I was like, okay, well, let's get this over with then. Yeah, I, I thought you. Uh, we were talking about the difference between the questions people ask. The yeah. Men ask different questions than the women or make different statements. Yeah, I was telling you last night, I was like, every single time a guy finds out that I'm having a baby, he's like, oh, you're going to love it, you know, being a dad's the best, this, that, and the other. But your thing. life's gonna totally change. But your life's gonna change. It's totally different <laughs> from what you got now. And I was like, yeah, yeah. All the guys tell me that. And then you got the women who are like, oh, when's the due date? Right away. And it's like, are you telling the name yet? What's his name? So you tell them the name. You're like, where are they delivering? It's like totally yeah. different questions between all the women and all the men. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. All right, well, let's. Uh, I have a question for you. So, um. Let's talk about quirks people have, and um, I, what is you, do you you have a funny quirk? I have a really funny one that I let everybody know, and and you know what I know my what yours is because yeah, it happens it to me all the time. <laughs> um, do I have a funny quirk? Well, um, how about I go over my yeah, quirk first? You go first? Okay, so my my probably the weirdest quirk I have is I am like really obsessively paranoid about security so that makes me want to close doors and lock them all the time subconsciously lock them He's like, i didn't lock that yeah you did i saw you do it so <laughs> in the dojo that means i've uh locked people out 
it like from one room. We, we used to have two rooms and, you know, somebody be in the other room. I walk in and I walk back in and I lock them out. Or I, I can't tell you how many times I've been at home here. And this has happened like like everybody's out by the fire. You know, we're, we have a campfire going and having a good time. And then I walk in um, side for a second and then I lock the door. And then somebody or I'll be hanging out on your front porch and you lock the door and go yeah, up to bed. Yeah. It's like, Tim, I was out here. Oh, I know. You <laughs> locked me out. No, I didn't. I said, yeah, you locked me out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just so uh, uh, subcon- subconscious. Batting down the hatches. I mean, I've even locked my car door in the garage. You know, like, why do I, why do you have to lock your car while it's in the garage? I don't know. I just do it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's one of the things I, I, I've locked my wife out of the house so many times before. <laughs> it's kind of become a really big joke where if somebody's outside, I'll actually turn the lock. So yeah. they hear the lock going off. Tim, and, no. Yeah. <laughs> And they yell, you know, I get yelled at, but it, I'm doing it on purpose because I know that you'll recognize me turning off the lock. Yeah. So it's a very rec- recognizable uh, sound. So do you th- have any quirks of your own? That I mean, nobody's ever pointed out quirks of mine. I think that's the only reason why you know yours. It's because we make fun it of you for it. It affects other people. <laughs> yeah, we make fun of you for it, so you know. <laughs> um, so I know plenty of other people. Like my dad, he always has this thing about doors being closed. Okay. Like, I remember me and my brother, we had our closet door open for some reason. He's like, you guys got to start closing this door. You never have it closed. And it's like, well, why do we need to close it? Because it needs to be closed. But why? Because doors are on there made to be closed. <laughs> like, you don't have a reason. He just yeah. wants, I think because it looks better, you know, than the closet door being open and just have it closed. Yeah, I don't know. And now I do that now, too. But, you know, the other thing was cabinet doors. But that makes more sense because he's tall. Yeah. And when people leave cabinet doors open you hit your head on them all the time well i could understand cabinet doors like in a you know, kitchen cabinet yeah, they door. Just get i mean in the way because why would you leave them open anyway i yeah. mean that's just kind of so that was his theory for all doors yeah okay. all doors had to be closed <laughs> all doors had closet to be closed. door i was just in there i'm just putting my shoes away well close it before like you know yeah sometimes he'd be messing with us like well you have to close it every single time you walk away from it yeah he didn't actually mean that but we'd have our closet door open yeah why wouldn't you have it closed I guess they're on there to be closed. <laughs> I guess we have all the uh, all have something that we're like a little obsessed with yeah. and everything. One of the one of the quirks with my wife that I think is really funny is when uh, we're talking on you know our mobile phones together and we say goodbye. She she never hangs up the phone. Like I always have to be the one that actually hangs the phone up. I I could I could say goodbye to her and then I could just hang out on the phone and just like listen to her whole day if I wanted. You know what I mean? Like, cause she never hangs up and I've asked her about it. She says she hangs up, but she doesn't hang up. I, I don't get it. Our wives are both technical, technologically impaired. Oh, you think that's what it is? Um, but you know, I don't know. I, I don't know, but it, it kind of reminds me of those days, you know, when you're a kid or like a teenager and you know, you're talking to a girl and you're like, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> she might Nobody think if you up. turn the screen off then it's hanging up, but it doesn't work like that with phones. Oh, I never thought of that. Like Maybe. if she just hits the power button to turn the screen yeah. off, she thinks it's off. That just turns the screen off. You're still you can still talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I hit the big red button, Esther. It's it's funny how much uh like things on her phone, like something's going wrong on her phone, but I I have to actually see her phone to see what's going wrong with it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So I, I, I don't know what the situation is, but it, it's just funny that like every time I, I hang up, if I have a fo- like sometimes, you know, you have the phone in your pocket and you're like, oh, well, if she hangs up, then I'll have to pull the phone out. Yeah, but I always I always have to pull it out and hang it up, on her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's just a few uh, uh, funny quirks today that I thought were comment uh, your saying. quirks down below. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's a, a good one. So if you have any quirks, let us know what yours are. Or, you know, if you want, you can divulge other people's quirks, too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, today we wanted to talk about something. And this kind of came up because of our uh, summer camp. And uh, I've been reading a lot about this lately, too. And I, I kind of notice it, and I bet a lot of people notice it in the neighborhoods, is that um, kids don't play outside anymore. Or uh, it's almost like they don't know how to play outside. Yeah. Um, so... Justin kind of remembers the situation that happened at our camp with the wa- um, we were doing water guns, and you want to you want to give the story a little bit. Um, I don't remember what you're talking about. So you well, okay, <laughs> so so the kids were uh, 
the kids were doing a water gun fight and at our camp and they just they kept on like saying you can't squirt me or you know uh, like something yeah, yeah, and yeah. i was i looked at you i said what do you mean why do they think they can't i mean it's a water gun fight i mean isn't it kind of implied yeah. and and your comment was yeah kids just don't know how to play outside with each other anymore right. and it kind of like kind of shocked me and kind of hit me and and i was like yeah you know when you look at the neighborhoods and like we're in my neighborhood and there's tons of, i know there's tons of kids here but you never see them outside I just honestly think there's too many rules. Oh, you think it's because too many rules? They don't know how to play outside, but there's also too many rules. Because, like, the the situation you're talking about is one kid's <laughs> sitting there, and he's not ready to squirt the other kid, but that kid's, like, getting, you know, with the water. He's like, I'm not ready yet. Don't squirt me. You're not allowed to squirt me. That's cheating. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, you're just not ready. Yeah, like, yeah. It, when we say go, it means everybody, like, squirts each other as much as they can. Like, yeah. that's the way this works. It's not like everything has to be fair, and you know, yeah. if he's not ready, then you're not allowed to do anything. You have to wait till he's ready. It's it's kind of funny how they make up rules because I remember when we were there, we said, okay, if you don't want to play or get squirted, you can go in the pavilion area yeah, no and have a seat yeah. on the uh, the thing. So in their mind, that meant well, if I want to, don't want to get squirt squirt at, but I want to squirt somebody else, I could do it. And it's like we had to kind of explain yeah. to them, like like no, no. You can't squirt other people. Yeah, you can't like, sit in the safe zone and start hitting everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just had a lot of trouble with that. But um, going back to like, I think they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they did. Some of them anyway. Yeah. They're like, ah, oh, they can't squirt me from here. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to look for loopholes right away. Yeah. Um, but you know, when the kids, and this is one thing that I have a lot of concern about, is that the fact that the uh, kids don't seem to go outside very much anymore. Um, you know, when I, I not like I, they used to anyway. Yeah. I, and I noticed this, I guess maybe it, this really started noticing this about 10 years ago and, uh, 10 years ago, you know, I, I got this new house and I would walk my dogs. And since we work at night and I'm here at lunch, you know, you know that there's tons of kids in this development, but you yeah. don't ever see them outside. Many you of know, them when I walk students. my dogs. Yeah. When I walk my dogs or whatever, they're not outside. Um, what do you, what do you think? this situation is that's keeping them inside um i mean like i had video games when i was a kid it probably wasn't as big when you were a kid yeah like we had xbox and stuff like inside um yeah. but probably just parents forcing their kids to be outside yeah okay we were only allowed to play video games <laughs> if it was raining and my mom said it was okay just because it was raining or we couldn't go outside doesn't mean we were allowed to play video games yeah we weren't allowed to watch very much tv we yeah. weren't allowed to play very many video games. Um, we had to go upstairs play with Legos. Yeah. Or well, my generation, or something. <laughs> my generation, you know, we didn't have internet, tablets, yeah. barely had computers. Um, the video game was like the Atari, which you know could hold your interest for a little while, but it really wasn't that interesting to hold it for very long. Yeah. So I think we had a tendency to hang out with friends and things like that. I don't have a problem with kids playing video games if they're inside. No. Because there are actual benefits to it. I, I um, have no, nothing against it. But I think if it's nice outside, could you, could you be outside? And when they say I'm bored, there's nothing to do outside. You know how many times I told that to my mom and I found something that I really had fun doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because there's more. <laughs> there's something that you want to do and you can't get it out of your head. So you said, I'm bored because I can't do this thing. It's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> so go find something else to play. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I I was doing some research on this topic, too, and, and there's some other uh, theories. You know, a lot of it um, has to do with, you know, being outside. Um, if there's nobody else outside, there's kind of like a critical mass of kids you need. Yeah. In other words, if nobody if you if your kid goes outside and there's nobody ever outside, there's nothing to do. Right. Because yeah. most of the things we do are with other people. Yeah. And they have a 100 percent chance of you know, being able to go online and something, there's something to do. Yeah. People you can talk to or. Yeah. So, um, so you're saying it's a community problem where like the community is inside instead of outside. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, that, that you have to set it up so that there's things to do outside. Yeah. And so that when they do get outside, there's other things to do and it's not an organ. It doesn't have to be an organized sport kind of thing too. Yeah. Um, because 
I, I'm also doing was doing a little research about this, and they said um, you know kids can get outside for um, sports, but since they're so competitive that a lot of them don't find it very fun anymore, and you know which means that they are doing it more kind of for the perspective of like schoolwork, you know, you're doing yeah. it to get good at a sport and be competitive, but there's not very much uh, time for you to just experience, you know, free time and things like that. Yeah. Coming up with things to do. Um, I grew up on 40 acres and we had uh, cousins that lived right next to us as in like, it was, I don't know what you call it. Is it a row home when there's like three houses put together? Yeah, I guess you Something would call like that. A it was home, like three yeah. houses put together in the middle of 40 acres. Um, and so they were a little younger than us, but only by a couple of years. So we were always playing with them. Like we never wanted to be inside. We wanted to be outside. Yeah. And when we were inside, we were watching movies together. Like we were always together, which is really great. Um, and then they moved and we're like, I have no idea what to do. And that's kind of like my the brother, but mass. we were like, I really, I don't know what to do. Like, oh, let's play this. It's not as fun with two people when yeah. you had four people before. Well, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned this because we were discussing this a little bit before, and I, I was mentioning how four of you, you know, you could say, oh, now all of a sudden you can do things like, oh, we can play wiffle ball together, or you can um, play basketball, or, you know, have a basketball two-on-two -two match. But yeah. if it was just you and your brother, you might be able to do a one-on-one -on -one basketball, but you're probably not going to go out and play wiffle ball together yeah, or something like that. definitely not as fun. We used to play a lot of street hockey. Like yeah. just she's running around with a uh, hockey puck and sticks. Um, and that's nowhere near as fun when you can't ha when it's one on one. Yeah. Because one person has to be the goalie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And uh, did you ever um, think, too, that um, I, I, I don't know. Do you think this plays into it? Do you think people are worried about the safety of their kids or um, things like that? Maybe that's part of it. Because um, you obviously do have to be careful of that. Um, part of it is though that, or part of that of safety part is um, that when kids are in larger groups, they're less likely to have something happen. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, somebody wants to find a kid by themselves, not like six, seven kids together. Oh yeah, because then it's almost like a lot of witnesses. Yeah, or I that, or like six kids, seven kids might be able to kick your butt. Yeah, we or have do something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, we have <laughs> we have a lot of. Um, you know, like a lot of people are worried about safety, but you know, actually, nowadays is it's safer than ever. You know, um, we just hear a lot more reports you, about you it. You just hear a lot more reports, but the evidence shows that it's actually safer than it ever has been. And um, you know, but I think some people still worry so much that kids don't get a whole lot of time with free play. Yeah. Um, another uh, another book I was reading, I think it was called uh, "Coddling the." Um, American mind or something like that and uh, he was writing about how they did research and found out kids like were allowed to be alone without adults there at a lot older age in other words you know my generation probably seven or eight you know maybe yeah. even younger how far you, were you allowed to go from your house and um, to the street like were you playing with kids on your street uh, well early on and I remember this was when I had training wheels <laughs> on yeah. my bike and it's one of my earliest memories was I was able to uh, ride down the street to this develop the entrance of the development, which was, you know, that was quite a bit distance. And uh, on, when I was on training wheels, I think I was probably, I don't know, what would that be like five or six? Oh, that depends on how fast you got off of them. Yeah. I, I, I was younger. I though. was very average. I was very average with, uh, with that. I think. Probably six, seven years old. Yeah. Something like that. And then I think by the time I was able to ride my, uh, two wheel bike, I was going down to my friend's house who actually was in that development. Yeah. And so you just had a whole development. Yeah. By, by probably seven or eight, I could probably walk, um, where we, where we were at into, we used to have a seven 11 in town. Yeah. And we would go to seven 11 and, um, by that age, my at that time we didn't have cell phones so the way my mom would get us to come home for dinner was a whistle <laughs> she would blow uh, yeah. a whistle so as long as we could hear that whistle you know we my were mom used to send a dog out after us oh really if, okay. yeah she said go find justin ryan so when the dog found us and we knew it was time to come home oh that's pretty cool yeah yeah because we were on 40 acres so we could be all the way out in what whatever field so the dog would just run around and try to find us she usually went straight towards us like she knew where we were or something but 
Yeah, you know this whistle thing. <laughs> Here's something really funny about it. You, you don't you can't believe how keyed in my brother and I were to this whistle. Yeah, I mean we could hear this whistle like really far away to the point where we would be like in um right now in our town Libertos is where the Seven Eleven was and and I don't know if you you probably know where I, I lived over where I lived on Ricker I know you lived on oh, okay Rickard Road yeah and um but most people would know but that's probably almost I would say maybe a half, almost uh, half mile, three quarters of a mile. I'm thinking. Okay. And my, we could be in the store and hear my mom blow this whistle and my brother, but it was like funny because my brother and I, we'd, we'd look at each other and go, I heard the whistle. Did you? And he'd go, yeah. And my, my friends would be like, what? We didn't hear anything. Like, yeah, we I, would, we'd hear it in my friend's house. <laughs> I had friends. It was like a family of eight. And they had a pretty big property, so we were always all over the place. Um, and the one time we were there, he's like, I got to go. Yeah. I was like, why? You're, you're at your house. Like, where do you got to go? He's like, I got to go. I was like, you have to go to the bathroom or something? He's like, no. <laughs> I heard the cowbell. Oh, uh, okay. I had a cowbell. I was like, I don't hear it. He's like, you can't hear that? I d- let's let's go. Let's go. We have to go. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, he was really worried that his mom was going to get mad if he didn't show up earlier enough or something like that. I don't know. But um, he was just like, he heard this cowbell. And then... After hanging out with him for a little longer, I started hearing it too. Oh, okay. But I was like, I don't hear it. He's like, you don't hear that? Yeah. How can you not hear that? I was like, I don't hear a thing. Yeah, it was weird. This whistle was like clear as day. Yeah, I, I was mean, listening to me, for it and I couldn't hear it. And my mom wouldn't, she would blow it once and then she'd blow it twice. And my brother and I would be like, I heard the whistle. And then and my friend would, my friends would be like, what? And they'd go, oh, there it is again. And they'd be like, I, I don't hear yeah, it. I don't, I don't hear, hear it. Thing. <laughs> it was, but it was weird because we'd hear it like I remember we could sit at our friend's house with the TV on. Yeah. They would have the TV on and everybody's talking and stuff, and we would uh, we would hear this whistle over all that noise. It was pretty. It was pretty it was wild. Pretty crazy, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I guess uh, you know that just goes to show you that um, in you know nowadays people you know just don't spend as much time outside. Um, yeah. and, and it, it's a little different now. I, I'd like to, maybe in the future we can kind of talk about ideas on how to get, you know, your kids back outside. I have one more point with the safety aspect. Another safety aspect you can have, especially if you live in like a development is know your neighbors mm-hmm. because there's always eyes watching your kids. Somewhere. Oh yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, your neighbors, your kids were doing something bad. Hey, I don't you probably want to know this. You know, little Johnny was doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I got thanks for letting me know. Well, you had that, right? Cause your dad worked at the bank. Yeah, and my so dad worked, my dad. dad and mom worked in town, so my dad would hear from people coming into the bank, and they knew us, and they'd say, yeah. oh, I saw your kids here. I saw your kids there. My dad, through the course of the day, knew would exactly know where, where, we, we were. where we were, you know. Um, probably the only place we were safe was, uh, you know, when we go – we used to go down to this creek and do f- some fishing and stuff like that, and there was nobody down there. But yeah. if we were in town, uh, my dad would hear everywhere we were at. Yeah. You know, we had eyes on us. Like, we couldn't get away with anything <laughs> when we were a kid because uh, uh, we would get caught so quick uh, yeah. because basically <laughs> the whole town knew my dad and knew who we were. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I saw him down this place. Oh, they're not supposed to be down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And my dad would come home and kind of like, yeah, I heard you were doing this today. And I would be <laughs> like, how did you know? <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, I think that's we're going to end the podcast here Um, in the future, though. I think we should go back into this topic and maybe give some people some ideas on, you know, how to get your kids back outside. Um, Don't forget, guys, to subscribe to our channel um, if you want. Um, If this is on one of our, uh, you know, our YouTube channel or somewhere where you can comment, you can always comment below or you can email us your comments and ideas at the theory at maximpactkarate.com. And uh, we'll see you in the next podcast.